Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organized Notebook. In this video, we wanted to show you how to sync your Notion with Google Calendar and this is something that many of you have been asking about and we're going to be using Zapier for this and there are many apps out there that do similar things but we think that Zapier is one of the more easier to understand ones although the pricing is a little bit higher. So let's get started. First, we'll want to set everything up so that it's ready for building the automation. So first you need a Notion database where you're going to be adding new pages that are going to be reflected as events into your Google Calendar. So for that, let's go ahead and type here meeting automation. And we're going to choose a table database and plus new database and now we're going to adjust the property. So for this to work, we definitely need a date property. So let's go ahead and change this tags property to a date property by clicking edit property. And we're going to go to type and choose date. And we should rename this date as well. So now we have the name and the date. So this is really the basics of all you need to do this. And of course you can add other properties to this, but we're just going to go with something very, very simple. So next we're going to go over to Zapier and you'll want to make sure that you have an account in Zapier so you can get started with using it. And we just wanted to mention quickly that Zapier does have limits if you want to use it for free. So if we go to the plans and pricing, you can see what the differences are between each of the plans. So if you're on the free plan for Zapier, you can only do single step zaps, which means a trigger and one action. And you can only do 100 tasks per month. So that means that in this example, if you had over 100 entries in your database that you needed into your Google Calendar, you're going to reach a limit with your plan and you'll have to use one of the other paid plans. And many of these automation apps tend to use these kinds of pricing systems based on tasks. So just make sure to check and decide which one is best for you. And you can decide whether you want to upgrade or not. So let's go back to our dashboard. And now we're going to also check our Google Calendar. So in Google Calendar, when you do this, we recommend you to create a separate calendar for all of these events added by Notion if you'd like so that it's easier to keep track of. So we just made one called Automation Calendar here. And to make a calendar, you just have to click the plus sign here and then click Create New Calendar. So that's how you can create a new calendar. And now you're pretty much set up. So you have your Automation Calendar in your Google Calendar. You have your table in Notion and now you have your account in Zapier. So now we can get started with making our automation and we recommend switching to classic view because this uh, AI one tends to be really laggy. So we'll just go to classic view and we basically wanna connect Notion with Google Calendar. And what we want to happen is that when there's a new database item, we want to find or create event. So what this means that if the same event exists, it's not going to add it, but if it's not there yet, it's going to create an event. So let's go ahead and try it. And now we get to this page. So the first thing we have to do is to connect the app. So you'll have to do this and make sure that your notion is connected here and you can choose the event, which is new database item and we can click continue. And next you're going to want to connect your workspace here. And we're just gonna show you this because it can be a little bit confusing. So let's say we did reconnect, you're gonna get some kind of page like this. And you wanna make sure that you're in the right workspace here. So just double check the workspace here that you want with the page to the database. And then you can click select pages and you can go to the page that you want Zapier to access. And for us, that's meeting automation. So we're going to allow access. And once you allow access, we can continue. And now you can choose the database. And this is the meeting automation database. And we can click continue. 
And let's actually add some things to our notion so that it has something to test it with. So let's say that we have a meeting with John. And we're going to put the date with the end time. So we can just put 1. And now we have meeting with John 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. Let's say. And then if we go back to Zapier. We are going to want to just refresh it again. So we're going to continue and refresh fields. So that should refresh the fields we just added and continue. And now we can test the trigger. So if we click test trigger, it's going to show you the database items there. And we can look for the one that has the meeting with John. And sometimes you have to click this find new records or it's not going to refresh what you just added. So now it shows this database item D meeting with John. So we can go ahead and select this one. Continue with selected record. And now you're going to have to connect your Google Calendar account with Zapier. And once you connect that, you can continue. And then you should get this choice on what calendar you want it to add it to. So in this case, we made this automation calendar. So we're going to have it go to automation calendar. And then you can enter what it's going to search the term by. So in this case, you just want to search it with the title. Meeting with John. And then for the start time, we would add the date. And actually, you have to select it here, date, and then we can find the date start and we can add the date end here. And now the summary text is what's going to show up on your Google Calendar. So we want the title here as well, which is meeting with John. And you can write whatever you want in the description. For example, if you had a description field in your properties, you could also add that here. Same with location and everything else. And then we definitely have to add the start date and time. So we're going to go ahead and put the date here as well. Date start and date end. And now you can choose some other things like repeat frequency, repeat until and so on, even the color. And now we can just click continue. And now what we can do is test the step. So let's go ahead and test the step. And now it's sending an event to Google Calendar. And now it says that event was sent to Google Calendar about one second ago. So let's just double check in our Google Calendar. And now we see meeting with John right here. So it's working correctly. So let's go ahead and publish this. And now if we go back, we should see that it's active here and running. And every time this runs, it's going to take up one of your tasks. So just be careful here that you're watching your plan. And now let's actually try it out by going to this meeting automation. And we're going to add a new page. And we're going to call this meeting with Jack. And let's say we put it with the end date and include time. And you have to do this or it's not going to work because right now we set it so that it looks for the start and end time. So just be careful with that. Let's say we put 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. And that's it. So now if we wait, it should end up into our Google Calendar. And sometimes this can take a while. So just be patient and don't panic if it doesn't show up immediately. And you can check when it's being run by going to Zap History. And when it does run, it should show up here. So now we see that it ran this zap and if we go to our Google Calendar, we see it reflected here. And if we go to our Notion, we see that this was the original thing that we added to this table and that's why it got to the calendar. In our opinion, we think that this is a bit complicated for what it's worth because in our case, we use Google Calendar and Notion for separate use cases. And if you're interested in that video where we compare Google Calendar with Notion's calendar, feel free to check that out. We'll leave the link in the description below. And let us know your thoughts, comments, and if anything was confusing in this video. And we hope to see you in the next one.